Well, hello and welcome. I'm Cindy Dayjack with Queen Bee Creations, and thanks for joining me today. Now, today we are we're going to be making little booklets, and the idea for this is really born out of the fact that when I do shipping labels here in the shop, they get printed out in eight and a half by eleven paper, and then I cut them down. So I'm left with half a sheet of paper and as much as I use these for scrap pages and um, writing notes doing sample colors for for customers and things I end up with a lot of these so one of the things that I was thinking about because we've had a lot of birthdays and we've been in our family and we've we've been going out to restaurants and so the younger grandkids are there without stuff to do. I mean, if it happens to be a place that has crayons and stuff, but it reminded me that when, when like my kids were young, they all liked to have little booklets. They all liked to have little books to draw pictures in, to write secret notes to themselves. And I gotta tell you, I like having little, little books. So I have little, I have books that I sketch in. I have books that this is notes on this, and this is I'm saving quotes on that. and. So I'm a bit of a, you know, maybe they come by it honestly. So what I thought is um, we'll put together little booklets and then, then they've got them. They've got them. I've got them to be able to um, use and save for things. So first thing that we're doing um, is I've got a piece of cardstock. You could use... You could use um, cardboard from a cereal box. I just don't eat cereal, but that's really good cardboard to be able to make a book cover from. Um, if you're gonna be decoupaging a lot, you could have an old postcard. Maybe you're gonna use that, whatever you've got. The cover of a magazine, because if we start decorating it up, it's gonna get thicker anyway. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am just going to, I want my book to have I'm gonna say deckled edges, which means it has torn edges. And I, and I want that to happen with my book pages too. So I'm just taking a big ruler and I am pulling my paper toward the ruler to be able to create that lovely torn edge. And however big I end up doing this, I just wanna make sure that it's smaller than my paper is how big I'm going to do my paper. And I'm eyeballing this. You could measure. <laughs> Make sure that your book covers even. All right, let's do this side. And then this side. Alrighty, so this is my book cover. Um, obviously, folded in half is the size that my book is going to be. It is smaller than my book pages, so before I get started on it, what I want to do is use it as my template for my book pages because they'll all need to be torn down, right? And then that way, all of my pages will also have those wonderful torn edges. Now I'm just doing one to have my as my template, but you know what? You you can easily rip multiple pages at the same time. So no worries thinking that this is gonna be you know a crazy long time tearing pages. You can have straight edges and not worry about this at all. I'm just looking at the rustic nature of it. Okay, and you're only gonna see me tear this last page down. I'm gonna do the rest off camera and uh, get it done. But before I start messing with the cover, I wanted to get just one of these ripped down so I can use it as my template for the rest of my pages. And you can have, you know, however many pages you want in your book. But I think that this is also a fun little thing. Um, you could get 
your kids doing with you is that now they get to decorate up their book cover. So for this, I have old pieces of, um, I have old pieces of decoupage paper, um, you know, that are lying around in pieces. <laughs> I have little um, booklets that have different pieces of paper in them. I have some stickers. I have some old um, pictures that I cut out of things in case I wanted them and needed them. And I'm just going to do this very... loose. I, I want it to be, um, I'm not going to need you. Oh, and I have, oh, oh, I'm excited now. I have some of the little torn pieces from the, um, dryer sheet craft that I did. So I'll put a link to that because if you didn't see it, then you're going to want to know where the heck I got these colored dryer sheets from and what I'm doing with them but I'm gonna add those, I'm gonna add those. Okay, that's exciting. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is um, maybe, I'm looking around thinking, well, this is paper. I can do it on the paper and then get rid of that paper. Is I'm gonna to wanna to start to get all of this glued down, right? So some of these things are gonna overlap each other. And I am just going to, I had a little, there it is. Um, I'm just going to layer them all over to cover that book page. And I'm okay if some elements of it stick over the edge too. Now you could just simply paint your cover. You could have started out with a magazine cover and you just love that. Um, I had a kind of, a kind of a little sample one. You could just start with a postcard and the postcard, a little lovely vintage postcard could be super cool. And so you're just, you're just going with that. Um, you know what? There's no rhyme or reason. You can do whatever you want because at the end of the day, it's your book cover. I'm just, I have no idea what these images are, but I think I was just saving little images. Oh, they're all little angels. There was a theme to that bag. Okay. Okay, that works. Here's some things that are, I like this one. So the, these booklets, um, I'll put a link maybe to, to, I got them from Amazon and like this one has all different little flowers in them. This one is all little handwriting, postcards kind of thing. This one has animals. They're all, they're all different. One is all maps, one is about tea. They're just kind of cool little elements that um, you can add in to junk journaling, scrapbooking, um, card making, any kind of paper craft, right? And look, book making, if you're making books. Who knew, who knew that we were ever gonna do this? I had no clue I was going to be making books. And that's usually the way that my life is. Five minutes ago, I had no book thoughts in my head. And look at me now. I'm making books. So sometimes you just go with things, right? You just go with it and say, you know what? I'm, I'm going with that while the idea is in my head. And you know what? For me, a lot of times it's, I can't get rid of certain thoughts until I do them. It'll just keep hounding my brain until I just break down and go with it. 
looking if there's another little piece on here. That kind of makes sense. And a sideways piece. There's a sideways piece. Oh, you could be a sideways piece. So this is not pretty ripping or tearing. It just is. And I'm just layering things over themselves here. So look, I have that fuzzy bit sticking out. That's going to extend out over my cover. I love that. I'm going to have to do more of those so that it doesn't look lost and lonely all by itself. So I'm just going to continue sticking things and um, leave this to dry before we move on to other things, other elements of this. And that's all it is. I mean, you could be one and done with whatever you're doing, meaning, you know, maybe you're just doing a postcard and uh, you're starting from there and oh, I like you the other way. Um, and then that's cool. Then you're done with that. Or you could be like I am just taking bits and pieces of all kinds of things. It would be cool. Um, you could take like an old birthday card and turn that into the book cover. So if you've got some old birthday cards, if you're doing some books for your kids and you've got some old birthday cards of theirs, um, and uh, you could do the book cover out of a birthday cards. So then now that book is that much more meaningful for them. That would be cool. My cover is dry. I really like those dryer sheet fibers. <laughs> I'm sort of hooked now. I'm kind of kind of addicted. All right, and I trimmed down all of my little pages. And I have to say, I switched out the big ruler for a small, close to the pages ruler. It worked way better. And I just have this all. So it's a sharp point. You could just use a nail. We're not doing professional book binding, right? We're we're not, we're just, so don't freak. Don't let other people freak you out. We're just doing a fun little book. So what I want to do, and I'm just putting some sheets at once. I have a piece of cardboard. So, you know, corrugated cardboard to push in so that I have some give to it. And all I'm doing is punching two holes in there and going through my papers. So I'm just taking this sheet now and I'm just going to use it to kind of line up my holes on the next stack. Goes through so easy. Again, a nail, a nail would work. I was looking for a nail and found this. So, you know, I would have been using one. And that's it. So that's, that's our holes. And then I have, I have some colored cotton twine. This is really um, stiff. And um, I'm just, I'm using three pieces so that I just get major color. So I kind of went with kind of a pumpkin orange because I've got some tones of that in my piece a green because I've got some tones of that and a black. Um, but you could use yarn, you could use twine, you can use whatever you've got. So I'm looking at this being you know, a, a scrap project more than anything else. You're using old paper sheets. If you're doing this for your kids, I, you know what, again, like when I print things out on my printer, sometimes it's printing more pages of things than I need, right? I needed the first page, but I forgot to tell it that and it printed out five. So then it's only got printing on one side. I then use the back pages as scrap paper. You could do that with this, right? So you've got the blank pages all facing up and then the other printer pages face down. Still perfect for you to use, perfect for your kids to use. I have um, some darning needles here because I just wanna be able to fit these three things through. 
you're just going to want a needle that you're able to feed your your strings through. Oh, and I got two out of three. Let me, let me try for the third here. See if I can add it to the stack. Get out of the way. And I love these darning needles because they got big holes and I have bad eyes, so. And I'd say it was age, but my eyes were bad since public school. They're just worse now. <laughs> All right, so I have this. What I want to do is I want to have the strings available on the outside. So my first pass through, I'm gonna go up through my pages. And again, I may have to futz with this a little bit if they're not all lined up already perfectly. But so I'm gonna go up through my pages, pull it through to the center, and then down through the other side. Easy peasy. And then I just want enough of my strings on the outside for me to tie them together. I just want to tie them fairly tight, but you know, I mean, this isn't a book that's going to be crazy busy. I just have a bunch of strands to take care of here. Okay. So I want to get a finger down on there. I'm get a finger I'm not going to be using. And then get it tied into a knot to hold it. And that's gonna do. You can tie off your ends if you want. Um, I'm just gonna tie, I'm just gonna tie a little bit of a decorative bow and then get my extra strings out of the way and just double knot that so Everything is nice and tied off, taken care of. I'm gonna cut away these extra ends because they're already driving me crazy. Let me get those. And there we go. We've got a sweet little booklet that has lots of little note pages all from just kind of um, scrap papers that we've got and little magazine pieces. And it's just a great, fun little way. I had another one that I did. This one, I just used the pages that I tore out of books from um, scrapbooking, because quite honestly, my three-year-old grandson doesn't care if he draws on top of lettering or onto blank paper. And this just had like an old vintage patterned card that I put over top of the cardstock and I kept it really simple. So I just wanted to show you um, one that was super simple, right? It could have just been the blank cardstock, same thing. You could go a little bit more involved, you could go less involved, you could use lined paper you could use, um, you know, old, old book pages, you could use blank paper, whatever works for you. But I think that they're super cute, super sweet, and a great way to use up old leftover paper in a way that saves it from our landfills and we get to reuse it in a fun, fun, cool way. Let me know what you think of this one, guys. Um, super easy to do, I think, with your kids even. They could have fun tearing the book pages or cutting them. They don't have to be torn. Um, but they get a great little end result out of it. And I think, uh, I mean, I'm going to use mine. I'm not, I might have to do another one, but because I think I want to keep this one for me. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>